Welcome to Moments with Marianne. I'm so delighted we're spending this time here today. We have a very inspiring show coming right up with special guest, Gary Goldberg, and he's here today to share with us his life in the spirit. Now, Gary's been doing radio on WRPI since 1999. Both shows are broadcast on WRPI 91.5 FM, Troy, New York. So let's welcome to the show, Gary Goldberg. I thank you, Marianne. It's a pleasure to be with you today. Um, I've enjoyed our previous conversations and and uh, and your work. I'm aware of your work, and I enjoy that very much. I, I'm doing very good. I was just uh, saying to Marianne how what how great I feel today. I really feel like I'm in sync with my inner self, and I think the the. I, I hope that my life can be an example for others. Well, I find you to be such a great inspiration. You have a show that I love listening to, and I know many of our listeners do as well. And so, you know, for people that are kind of new to the backstory of Gary, I would love for you to share with us what got you started on the path of being interested in radio. You know, I don't know whether I shared with about uh, this with you personally, but I do remember sharing this uh, that um, I never consciously saw it, saw it being in radio, except years and years ago, um, I had a friend, and he encouraged me to get my first class FCC license so I could be a radio DJ, and because he had friends that were. And we used to visit these friends in uh, different uh, radio stations. And uh, but it was the AM type of uh, talk radio. It was the fast talk and commercial radio, which which I didn't real I wasn't really attracted to. But I went to get my license anyway. So I went down to Florida. This is in the seventies, and uh, went to a Brown Institute down there and went to took classes to get my uh, first class license. Now you you can get a first class license and a third a thir- you only need a third class license to be on the air commercially. Um but I but but to be an engineer you, you it's good to get a first class license. So I that experience and and I was also with my same friend who created this uh what uh, what was called Super Disco and it was uh going to nightclubs with his, uh, with you know, and having an announcer, I was the announcer for him, and we would go to various nightclubs, and we would queue up a request on tape machines, and we had an index where we where we uh, followed, given information about the title of the song and the author and and the artist, and 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 so we would line it up and queue them up on tape machines with the request, and I would play them, and I realized I had a certain knack even then for um enjoy you know enjoying making people happy and and I love music but let me just let me backtrack just a bit uh when I was in the navy uh I was a radio man and again I did, never really thought the only reason I was in I wanted to be a radio man is because I looked through the porthole and I saw and I was a seaman I was on the deck on a ship and I was cleaning the you know it was hard work and I look in the porthole, and I see a guy reading a book in the radio room. It's a top-secret place, but he had the, had the window open. And he had his foot feet up, and he was reading a book. I go, I, I then I started taking exams and tests and stuff like that in order to qualify to be a, a radio man in the Navy, which I became third-class radio man, um, uh, a radio, uh, so th- petty officer. And and, and so, uh, but it was... So and then I got my foot in the door there. I mean, I, an interest in radio, and uh, then when I got out, I uh, was offered a job as um, a radio operator for Albany County Civil Defense. So again, um, I find myself in the uh, in the world of radio, and and then and then later on, I met my friend, and I started to do this work with him. And uh, but I, I I thought I was going to get a job in radio back then in the seventies, but nothing nothing materialized in that regard. I never got uh, uh, never got a uh, radio job then. But uh, I you know so I get a job working for the post office, and um, 
and then after a while, I, after a series of of of, of small jobs, uh, I finally I got a job at the post office. So, um, and that that was back in about uh, eighty uh, eighty one, something like that. And um, so, okay, but the, but I just want to add that the post office is about communication. So I've always, you know, sending mail, and so I and I was a radio. I was I was also a radio operator um in the navy so i went to uh you had to go to school to learn morse code and all that so i learned to send messages uh, the ships and the route route messages at, uh, to the captain and the and the and the uh, ceo uh, other uh, i mean not ceo but other officers during, when we were out at sea so um but when i was when i was uh in the post office it was uh it was uh back it, after about a number of years, I was doing poetry readings, and this was this is in the '90s, so uh, there wasn't really any radio jobs in between there, except the uh, full-time work at the post office. But then I, w- I was also interested in doing uh, poetry, and I would go to clubs and do poetry readings. And also, I was interested in doing. I was offered a job at Borders. This is not a paid job of hosting an Eastern philosophy book discussion group, which I loved because I, I had a long standing interest in spirituality. That goes back and way back. And uh and and my interest in that was uh, I always was interested in and uh and connecting with the the higher self within me and I knew it was there and I felt it and I, I was uh, following the path. I, I started meditating in the seventies with transcendental meditation while I was in college and, and so my interest in the in the and uh, meditating and all that and I, I also worked with the uh, science of mind uh, Ernest Holmes and in and, and I, I was a spiritual mind uh, practitioner and um, work uh, working with spiritual principles to better your life and um, so I was following a road of spirituality really I mean that that has been a constant in my life and and then when uh, the gentleman uh, came into my radio sh- uh, state, yeah, when I was doing my book discussion group at Borders, and and he happened to be a radio uh, operator for the station I'm working with now, WRPI, and uh, and he said, and uh, you you know, I was doing poetry readings too. So this gentleman came in and offered me the opportunity to do have a radio show. At WRPI in the summer of '99, um, I I didn't like his personality, and he almost, it was like a turnoff. He was too aggressive, but I almost didn't. It didn't follow up, and I said, "Well, I happen to be on vacation at the from the post office for two weeks." And I said, "If I wake up in time, I'll meet you at the radio station at 6 a.m." That was the time I was supposed oh to gosh. meet him. <laughs> so I I happened. I didn't even set an alarm. I woke up in time to get to the radio station, meet him because he was the engineer, and 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 I did a show in the summer of '99 at from 6 a.m. to 7 a.m. But that got my foot in the door, and I started getting going out for getting interviews. And I remember I had a little tape recorder, and I would go to the uh, there was a spiritual place called still there, the abode of the message, which uh, was about Sufism. And uh, so I developed an interest in Sufism through my interaction and, and communication and interviews with the people from, that, that would come to this re, uh, place, the abode of the message, which wasn't too far from where I lived. I developed an interest in Sufism, and, uh, and, and so I started getting a number of interviews from them. But I also developed, around that time, an interest in Buddhism. So I started interviewing Buddhists and Talkus and Rinpoches, and and I started getting into the door in the Buddhist realm too. So I was into the, the uh, this um, Sufism and also Buddhism, and 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 then my and then, but I also had an interest in chanting or what is called kirtan, K I R T A N. I can't uh, remember exactly when this started, but. I look. I was over at Borders, and I saw a I saw a poster for a guy with a guitar do, uh, doing kirtan and offering it. And so, it, my interest. I was doing radio at the time. I was still. I started, like I say, in the summer of '99, 
But uh, I started taking an interest in this kirtan, and I started to go. This guy would come around like once a month, and I would I would go to every one. And then I I became friends with this guy, and he would uh, he travel around, and I sometimes would go to some of these events that he you know. And I started developing more and more of an interest in interviewing. Now I had the Inner Spirit radio show going, and 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 I had developed my over the years it moved, moved from six a.m. to that summer of 99, from 6 a.m. to 7, 7 a.m., I started getting more hours. I started getting more hours. I started getting a better better position. People would come. People would go. I would keep on, I would keep on applying. You know, somebody, it was an opening. I'd apply for that opening. If I, if I knew I could get more hours, I would, I, I'd enlarge my hours until I had a, actually, at the peak, I had two five-hour shows. Um, um, one on one on Tuesday and one one on Thursday, and I had that for I had another show on Tuesday because, and I because I wanted to offer something more than spiritual, so-called spiritual music and interviews, which I had been doing. And the Kirtan artist, I started interviewing more and more of them, playing more and more of that music. The Kirtan, by the way, is call and response chanting. It's basically in the in the in the uh, the yogic tradition, or you could say the Hindu tradition, but although it's not of a religion. And but uh, it has a great, beautiful effect. It had a beautiful effect on me because the friend that I that I started to go see at these centers, my who turned me on to Kirtan, I started getting the experience that, I, and it was a lovely experience. It was it was very. It, I, I realized it was coming from the head to the heart that I could. I felt freer and freer. So I started. I you know I moved away from the Sufism. I moved away from the Buddhism. And I and I started wholeheartedly getting into the into the kirtan, and um, so so it, so I I just kept on um, so as far as the radio show was 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 going, uh, and uh, I start like I say I was starting to interview more and more people in the kirtan tradition and making more of more of a name for myself. Now I was not only involved in kirtan, but on my I would interview a lot of book authors, and that started coming more and more. So I was finding at the peak I was interviewing. Uh, three to four authors a week on my Thursday show, and then on Tuesday I would uh, offer that as I would play comp- albums, complete albums. I still do that. Well, I I still do that, and I and then and then I, and then have the artists talk about the music that I'm playing. So not only were, were were the listeners hearing the whole album in its entirety, but they would hear the artists talk about their own music. So that. And that that's not done anywhere. I'm the only one who's doing it. So I became really popular uh, through that and in, in, in my associations and also with the uh, book world because I would interview so many book authors and the publishers and publicists would get more and more interested in me and sending me more and more books. And I was very much interested in I loved reading for uh, reading these books because it would uh, it, it it kept me feeling so alive. So I had the kirtan going. I had these real great books to read. I had these great authors to talk talk with. I'd go to. I'd get invited. Now we're kind of on present day now. I get invited to all of these. A lot of events featuring. I uh, but you know uh, you know where I would as invitations. And I would travel. I would go to different places, Florida, um, Midwest, uh, invitations going all over the place. And uh, and I would go. I, you know, airfare and whatever I, you know, I. But it was it was a wonderful adventure. It, it is a wonderful adventure. And now I I want to stop talking because I don't want to. I need to take a breath. And uh, uh, Marianne, I would like you to. Ask me any question. I don't even know if I fully answered your question or <laughs> if I got into too much of a tangent because I get really wound up. Hey, no, I'm glad that you took that time to explain about just your journey and the progression to today because you are a very noted show host and you are very well established in what you do. And I think a lot of times people are like, well, you know, is it just you're just really super gifted? Is it something that you're really interested in? And it's a little bit of everything, you know. You know, this is a I, yeah. I I remember a time in my interviewing, in my I was always in, interested in people that interview other people. Um, I was interested in biographies and memoirs, and always interested in and and learning about people. 
and uh, following their journey, whether it's documentaries, and I always just I'd like to know about people and you know their journey. So, um, yeah, I, I I would love. So I took an interest in basically, it's it's self growth. You know, I think that really fuels me is to grow. It's something that is inside of me. It's not manufactured. I, I'm just, I just, it just moves me. I, I can't explain it. It's, it's just a force, and, and it, and it's, uh, and it's, uh, it wants me. This force, it just wants me to, just to keep on opening doors. Um, and not, is this is not just for me because it doesn't just work that well. It doesn't, it doesn't work entirely. You know, it works well. I mean, I learn. I was uh, at the, I've learned through various things that I've done, but. When I uh, when the radio world opened up to me, and uh, it was a great opportunity, and it really was exciting. And I want to go back in the beginning when I when I said in the interview process, I, I felt sometimes that I was performing, and that I was trying to you know how good am I? It would be like uh, I would judge myself, uh, uh, and then I would, when I would thought I was good, and I would you know I, I'd start. I got to a point. I got to a point where I let that go, and I, it, you know, I have, thank God it went because then my interview style, and I think this is why a lot of people, why everybody, you know, I guarantee them a good time. I guarantee anybody who comes on my show a good time, um, bar none, because uh, I know it's, I know, I know it's going to happen. They can just let go. They can be themselves, and 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 we can hang out. And I think it's like a like a almost like a fireside chat, you know. The, my style now and has been for a while is uh i'm first of all i'm very interested in these people these people that come on my show uh i i, I read their material very very deeply i take hours on each guest in preparation but i don't it's not like i have prepared questions to ask but i i ha, i ha, i have the interest and then i just uh introduce them on the air and um and then we're, we take off, and I don't even know how we're going to begin, even at the beginning. Um, it just I, I trust my instinct so well, and it, and it serves me so well that that it becomes a real fun experience, and it's a, it's always a surprise, and it's and it's always a joy. And um, I've got I've interviewed hundreds and hundreds of people over the years. There are people that I have that come back again and again because we have such a good time on the air and we, you know, and it's exciting um, to have them back that we have repeated guests. And so I, I do have uh, um, repeated guests, which I, I enjoy them very much. We have some really, really wonderful people that I interview and, and, and Marianne, as far as I see it, you know, I make no distinctions between, uh, you know the people that I have on the show and friend and friends. I mean, if you're a, if you like you were friends, you know, and and anybody that I know that I do work with, I consider a friend. I say work, but it's more like play. But we have a job to do, and I know that, and 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 to do it well, and I want to do it as the be very best, you know, and and it requires, and also I want to I also want to share. I'm deeply involved in my own spiritual uh, evolvement. And uh, through meditation, and and even even at home, when uh, chanting and 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 stuff. So I, um, and also in dialogue, it's very. I find, I find talking on the on the radio is part of my per, my my process, my grow my growth, and and I and um, and and in my friends that I talk with as well. Okay, I guess now you, now you take over. <laughs> <laughs> That's too funny. <laughs> well, I get it because it is this very organic discussion that takes place. And so, you know, it, it's just a nice flow that happens when you are choosing either musicians or authors to be on your show. How do you go through the process of deciding who's the one that you're going to go with? Because I know you're really guided spiritually in many ways. Yeah. You know, it's an interesting question because, um, I never know who I'm going to go with. Uh, I just recently, um, there's an artist that I had on the show. Uh, I interview a lot of musicians too, a Kirtan musician, spiritually, spiritual pe the people that, that that sing music, sacred music, and uh, very good. 
they're well world world known. I I get the very best because I want the very best on my show. When I say the very best, I don't mean popularity so much, but I mean what they do. I I really honor what they do when they and they share it with so many people and are well known. I like that. But I, even people that are not well known, that's okay. What 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 is the uh, what what helps me to decide? who's going to be on the show is how moved I am by them and their music. So this one artist, uh, I, I interviewed her before and I loved her music and I enjoyed it. And then she came out with a, a recent album and it never, it didn't click with me. And I've, I had her on the show for every album that she released, except for this, this recent one. And I, and I didn't know, it just didn't click with it, with, with this music. And so I started hearing it one day, one day, I get a lot of music, so I play a lot of music on my show. And there's obviously some albums that are not going to be played. I try to honor uh, uh, as many as as much music as I can from many artists, but uh, there's some people that you know they don't. Sometimes I I have them on for a while, and then I go to other people. But I try to if I really like them, I like to have them consistently from time to time on the show. Their music, but uh, this 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 artist, and then it I started hearing her music. And I realized it's not like her other 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 music. And I said, and I said, you know what I got to do? I said to myself, I've got to ask her if she'd like to be on the show. And it, the album had been out for a year already. Usually, when these new albums come out, I have them on right away. I says, you know, I got to contact her, and her, I got in contact with her her uh, representative. And and I I, I said, I, I, and then she came back, and I know her. You know, I mean, we've that uh, she had a half an hour to talk well that was it you know i knew i had it and i i said great great we'll do it so we were gonna i said we're gonna feature this album and the way we did that was very very interesting um i played um because i know she had a half an hour and i wanted to do this right like the interview i did recently i we went on for almost two hours because i had that time and and the artist was willing to take the time, and and this artist was was kind of busy, so uh, I said, okay, we have half an hour, but I really wanted to get her album, so I played it, I played I played it for a while, and the time for about a half an hour, then she called in, and we had a great conversation for about half an hour, maybe a little bit more, and then I finished the album off after. So each artist I just deal with differently. Mostly the artists are there for the whole album right through when we come, but this turned out terrifically and um i was very very happy about the way it turned out i was very happy to connect with her and it was funny because i was having a little disconnect with her for a while and i i felt like and then i saw her recently at a festival and we we reconnected and she said something and i realized there's there's not a we are connected she says you know i really appreciate what you do when getting all these artists on the show and and you know Sometimes I'm looking for um, acknowledgement, and I'm not sure the artist. You know that uh, it's important for me to know that the artist is acknowledging what I'm doing, and I, I finally I got that. Well, on that note, we're going to pause here for a quick break. We've been speaking with Gary Goldberg in regards to his life in the spirit. You've been listening to Moments with Marianne. We'll be right back after these messages. Internationally recognized and award-winning author Judy Goodman works and teaches outside the box of limited thinking. Working with people from every walk of life, her goal is to empower you to be the best you can be, no matter what the challenge is. Born with the gift of seeing beyond our normal vision, she has an extraordinary gift of working with every challenge. Teaching beyond conventional wisdom, her work is described as life-changing. Visit JudyGoodman.com. That's JudyGoodman.com. There comes a moment when you realize you're somewhere special, when you discover that each beautiful creature that you see has been rescued from a life of absolute horror and brought to this incredibly free place. Here's where their lives were forever changed and where yours will as well. 
Discover over 500 tigers, bears, and lions at the brand new visitor center at the Wild Animal Sanctuary just outside Denver. For more information, visit wildanimalsanctuary.org. Discover true freedom at the Wild Animal Sanctuary. There are nearly 2 million Americans living with amputation. Many live right here in San Antonio. Becoming an amputee can be scary, frustrating, isolating, but there's no reason to feel alone. The San Antonio Amputee Foundation is here to help support you and guide you toward resources such as home and car modifications and even prosthetic limbs. For more information or to make a donation, visit saamputee.org. We'll help you live a full, active life, one step at a time. San Antonio Amputee Foundation, healing limbs, hearts, and and souls. If not me, then who? This ethos is driving the Travis Manion Foundation to empower veterans and families of fallen heroes to develop character in future generations. In 2007, Marine First Lieutenant Travis Manion was killed in Iraq while saving his wounded teammates. Travis's legacy lives on in the five words he spoke before leaving for his final deployment. If not me, then who? Guided by this mantra, veterans continue their service, developing strong relationships in the community and thrive in their post-military lives. Visit TravisManion.org and ensure the character of our nation's heroes lives on in the next generation. If not me, then who? Welcome back to Moments with Marianne. We're here today with special guest, Gary Goldberg, and he's sharing with us his life in the spirit. Now, Gary, before we went for a break, we were talking about how you connect with the people that you do. And I know we talked about musicians, but how is it for you connecting with authors? I know you're very selective and you really move by spirit in which ones to really communicate with and to move forward with. As far as that question, I think it is... um... It comes from a sense like let's take an author, somebody that great authors. I mean, I get these books. I'm choosing a book. Here's a good one. Choosing a book to re to to for my show. I might not not even know the author, but I I like the book. I like the material. I like the subject. And then I get a lot of books in the mail, and I don't I don't inter, I don't call to get get them all interviewed, but the ones that hit me, I do. So for the most part, as far as authors concerned, I don't search out the authors. There's enough publicists that are pitching me that I got a lot to choose from there. Um, so uh, I, I and I, I must say I've been very, very fortunate to have these incredible, incredible people on my show every week, and it's been going on. I've been celebrating my 20th year from '99 to to 2019 this year, and uh, you know. I just consider myself very fortunate, and I'm, I'm happy to be able to continue doing it, you know. What are some of the things that inspire you on your spiritual journey? I know you talked about music being an important piece. Mm. What else inspires you? I think there's something inside of me. Uh, something inside of me. It won't let me go. It just won't let me go, and it, I, I don't know what it is exactly. But uh, it it can I inspire myself. It, there's some I I I inspire myself, but I'm I can tell you what I'm I what I'm drawn to. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm drawn to. Uh, I'm I'm drawn to the sense of um, quiet peace within me. That I feel is is inherent in everything. That whatever we when we say seems like a noisy world, but but if you take what, everything away, and you have nothing. Everything is created. Everything is created. It's, it came out of something. This is not. It, it's not. It's it's a material thing that exists only for a time. But what about you know when that didn't happen? What created that, and what created everything else? If you go all the way down the line, everything was created out of out of something. Until you get to the point where, who, where did creation come from? You know, and then that's startling to me. You know, it's that, wow. You know, so I'm kind of blown away by just um, life and being alive. And um, I, I have to say that I, I've had maybe with a number of other people some health health situations that uh, kind of, I think were part of this process of 
of of becoming more of who I am. And uh, and I think we. So I, I think I've been, th- and I think that I've been fortunate to have these health situations that I had to deal with, so that I, I think it helped to ground me really, and um and and, and to know that life is life is here for a, a while, and we're and like we're visitors, you know. I feel like a visitor here, and I feel like uh, I'm enjoying my visit. I don't know when it's going to end, but um I. I'm moved to know what 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 goes on after this, where you know what what's the next stop, you know. So I try to stay in the moment as much as possible, and that 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 question remains with me. So um, I know in order for that to be revealed, I need to be at peace, and I think I've left this the self self stress behind and for the most part, um, things that I would cause, the stress that I would cause through my thinking or, or, or and I and believe me, I, I've, I've created a lot of stress in my life. So I've been through that too, but I'm in a good place right now, Marianne. And, uh, and, and it's, it's, it's not, I don't, but it's not coming out of knowing like, uh, it's coming out of like, not knowing it's almost like, re, uh, the mystery the, uh, embracing the mystery, and I think all these guests, when I, the books I'm reading, these people also have this sense of it too, because that's what I'm drawn to. The people that that the question mark is open, that light, that the answers are all temporary too. You know, they're good, and they help you in living, and they help you to grow, be more of who you are. But there's something more beyond even beyond that, and I think that, but. I, I see these wonderful authors who they they take all this time in in in, in their practice and in their work and their, so while we're here, let's make the best of it. And I and I think that this, this is what I'm gravitated toward those people that that are are mature that way. You know, they they realize that this is a where it's a temporary, but but it's glorious too. So did I answer that your question? You sure did. And, you know, it's interesting, Gary, I kind of agree with you because when I'm interviewing people as well, I'm always looking for that positive message that um, the information that I might not know about, because it is an yeah. education of a lifetime, you know? This is it. Uh, I feel like this is a good point, Marianne, because I feel like school, I have, I, I'm, I'm still going to school, you know, um, except I, I'm creating my curriculum. You know? Oh, I get I'm that. Cre- I get that. <laughs> yeah, and you are too. Mm-hmm. And and you, you you know, and that's great. You know, and when I went to I went to all the you know grade school and high school and college and and picking the curriculum and and learning a new le- you know l- learning this and learning that and going to classes. I kind of enjoyed that. You know, I I always enjoyed the process of learning. Um, but I really enjoy that that I'm creating my own learning. You know, I, I talk with people and I'm surprised. One of my best friends, she said uh, just recently, I, I picked out a book I'm reading now because I tell people about what I'm doing. I'm reading this, I'm reading that. And she goes, I haven't, you know, and it, I read it before. And then I realized, wow, I'm in such a, she goes, I have, I'm realizing that she's not really reading that much. You know, she does her, her own work and practice and she's a singer and a songwriter and, but she's not like books. I, here, this is a good subject. Books, you know, um, I think they're so important. I, whether you're reading on Kindle or you're reading, you're reading, you're reading. I think we need to read. It, I think it's it's so important to read because it it stimulates the imagination. It stimulates it stimulates the mental process. You want to talk about beating, you know, you know, your mind is a muscle. And you need to, keep, and, and I find that it keeps you alert by reading because you're focusing your attention, and it's stimulating your imagination. It's creating an inspiration. When pe- I, see, this is what blows my mind. People, and I know a lot of people that don't pick up a book or read anything. How, how you know? How do you go on living a life like that? I mean, I don't, I don't, I don't get it. 
Yeah, it, I agree you know, with you. It, it, it feels you like you're out. living in ignorance. What? You just totally miss out because there's other perspectives and points of view yeah. that you yeah, would yeah. ever, you know, you'd probably otherwise never even come across. Uh, yes, that that is so true, and I and I and I feel that is so. Imp- if I didn't do this radio show, I'd be reading anyway. But I've got um, I'm more encouraged to do so, obviously, because. Um, uh, I'm going to be doing these interviews. Of course, I don't have to do interviews. I could do my radio show and just playing music. I could do that, you know, but that's not interesting enough to me. You know, I, I need to get, I like that. I like that connection with people. And I love to talk with people who do the work that have taken enough interest in what they do. They have a, they, they're, they're expert in their field. They, they work with other people. You know, and and I feel I'm so in, I feel I relate to that. I relate to them deeply because um, they're interested and curious enough to create something beautiful for other people to get to other people um, uh, for other people in life, and and it and it's just elevating to the consciousness of those people, and you know, and and I think and energetically, it helps to raise the vibration of the people in the world you're keeping you're, these are the people that are my heroes these people that write these books are my heroes these people that 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 create these wonderful albums and go out and play in front of people this wonderful this great music what i call the and the uh, you know kirtan um th- these are the people that i i'm, I'm going to that i really respect because they're really employing something that is connecting with other people and helping to 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 uh, make their lives better, you know, and, and 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 make us, you know, and also creating community. I didn't even mention that. That is one of the most important things to me. Is that is that I am really big on connecting people with other people, and I'm really big on on get people getting to meet each other, even if it has no benefit for me. I don't care. Because what makes me feel good is is seeing people helped, and I and I and I, I know I'm creating that with my show, but I see it in person too wherever I go, you know. So, but you know, I never I never feel, Marianne, that I've done enough. I just feel like, oh, okay, I'm just encouraged to continue to continue on, you know. I think that's a great place to be in because when we get to this place where we feel. Not content, but like complacent yeah, I, in a lot. You know, it's like, you know, then things can get a little boring. And, you know, education that we have by listening to these different authors and enjoying the music and, you know, doing our spiritual advancement is really, I think, where it's all at. I've been very blessed. I'm very grateful to to, to be in a position where that is true for me, you know. And... um yeah. Yeah. I mean, I'm not, I'm not, I don't want to put myself in a, in a, on a pedestal here either, because like in, in my personal life, I'm still working on stuff, you know? And, um, like I have a tendency to be not throw anything away. So my apartment gets to be smaller and smaller because I got more, more, less, less space to look at carpet, you know, and, uh, and more, you know, I'm getting these books and CDs and so, but, as I mentioned with you in the beginning, before we got on the air, I used to consider this like being a clutter addict, or or I or or the food I would I would eat, you know, just snacking, and I get, you know, and, and so my diet has always been the best. But I'm feeling better because I'm feeling all that is going to be. I, I'm feeling that it's being taken care of now. I'm feel I'm not panicking so much. That my personal life is getting out of control. I'm feeling more peace because uh, I I'm seeing the signs. It's happening. Just like I said, I picked up a whole big box of papers before we talked today, and it had all kinds of different things in there I hadn't looked at. I just threw in this box, and some of it is really important, you know. And and so I'm going through them and separating one by little by little by little. So, you know, a lot of stuff got thrown away, but I'm feeling this sense within me to really that I'm not alone. I feel like I have 
there's an there's something with me that's helping me directing me and what to do not to not to be discouraged stay and stay as much in the moment as i can that doesn't mean i can't enjoy my what I, I, I oh i everything i do i i do a lot if i like something i i get i do it a lot you know and it's like you know so i i have a tendency um to um get over involved in a lot of stuff so um but it's a process and i think this is life and i think we're all in a, in this together and you know and we can all help each other but i think it really is i think we have this inner guidance within us and we, that we can tap into and and if you know and i feel that when it's clicking man you know it's great because i think you can live a life you know being guided uh internally i'm not at a young i'm not a young man anymore and uh and but i feel like i'm not going to have a whole lot of years ahead but i know that way i feel right now i it, i feel like i feel like an like i'm i live I'm living forever in this moment. You know, I, I don't feel like a limitation. Isn't that weird? No, I think that's actually a great place to be in, you know, because it sounds like you have a lot of inner peace um, on your journey. And you, you talked about not feeling alone. I mean, we're going through this epidemic where people feel lonely and they don't know yeah. how to get out of that. And I think in many ways you can really be a light for a lot of people who are like, gosh, you know, I wake up and I'm alone or, you know, I, I just, I might be surrounded by people, but I'm alone. You know, this is, I, I've had to go through this feeling of aloneness, you know, uh, and, and it has been a struggle in a, in a way because I live by myself. So I've had to, had to deal with that. And I'm not, you know, I'm not saying it doesn't affect me. You know? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, but it's, it's nice to hear that you've gone to this place of some inner peace, you know, and I think for a lot of people, they can go, you know what, maybe I need to really kind of dive into my own spiritual path or my spirituality, either through books and music or one or the other, and just see where it takes me. I I think it's good. I think it's good to do that. Um, I, you know, like I said earlier, you know, Marianne, I, I feel people should read more. And, um, mm-hmm. and I, I think they should pr- choose a, cr- I know people, I know a lot of people that go on retreats, they go to classes, et cetera, but I'm talking about reading books, you know, and really getting into studying any kind of book at, at all. And I'm not, well, aside from the fiction and stuff, um, books that are, are going to really help you, help you to question yourself. Don't take that help you to grow as a as a person um you know we have the tools within us we have the power within us to do much more than we're doing and i think we should question ourselves are we doing enough and encourage ourselves and be encouraged by people that are doing that and helping us and i think connecting with others is so good and i i feel it's through the you know, we can meet, talk, we, we can meet people, we can have friends, we can go out to dinner with people, we can have drinks, we can do this and do that and do that. You know, and I mean, that, but that doesn't, that's not going to fill the inner void uh, that we feel, the lack of, of self that we feel. It Nothing on the outside is going to fill that up. And But I think that if you connect with the book, and I, I keep on coming back to this because cause books have been so good to me, you know, I mean, reading these books and the, it's not just the books, it's the words that I'm reading. I mean, I'm underlying and I'm getting these aha moments and I'm like, wow, this is so good. Wow. Right on, you know, and then and then I'll, I'll and then I get on the show with the person and I'm just so excited to talk with them because what I've discovered through the reading and and that's why we do great interviews because, you know, I'm. I'm a big fan of theirs. Well, do you know, and that makes it so that people are going beyond the book when those kind of discussions happen. They're not stuck kind of just like, you know, because a lot of times when we get a book, you know, there are a lot of questions that people have that go, that expand beyond what, what's available in the book. Right. Yeah. Uh, it stimulates other questions, you know, it, it helps to stimulate you know, it has to bring, help you, it brings to mind 
thoughts. It brings, you know, about what you what you need to hear. You know, maybe it, it something that has been buried deep within you that needs to be, that is brought out in the open. Um, I've had lots of experiences where I've with talking and, and doing interviews where I hit, get this incredible aha, and something that was buried comes up to the surface. And and I'm just so I'm so happy mm-hmm. to meet it again. It seemed to got buried. Maybe I knew I knew the truth what it was for some time, but I I hadn't you know. But you know, so uh, you get to meet part of yourself again. You know, uh, it gets when anything we have a lot in Miriam. We got a my opinion. We've got a lot buried in her. everybody has so much buried within themselves. They're they're like. There's so many hidden treasures in each and every individual that if they accessed it, they'd be much happier. It's nothing on the outside that people really need. It's something on the inside they really need, and it has to be accessed. Our, my communication with people, my my happiness with others doesn't stem because they're good people. It's because I've discovered something within myself that well, you know that makes that communication pr- productive for myself and that person. But I think it's those, we have that, those hidden jewels. We got these buried treasure that is hidden within us. And, you know, I read like, you know, I mean, Eric uh, Tolley and, uh, you know, I I hear the, read the wisdom and stuff like that. And, and Carolyn Mace, and there's so many others that, that are, that are speaking really, really good wisdom conversation. I mean, they, they're really hitting the mark yet. Unless you're living that yourself, you don't know it. You can read it, but you. So what I do, I read it and apply it, and igno- and I see it within myself. I don't see it as outside myself. So those people that I'm reading, those books, I don't see it as something outside of myself. They're, it's all in me. Everything is all in me, and it gets accessed when it gets recognized. Isn't that the truth? And, you know, I get that because there are times when I'm talking, like the discussion we're having, it's bringing up things in me going, hmm, I need to investigate this and look into this. And it, yeah. you know, when we're willing to be open in a conversation, that's, I think, when the miracles start to happen. Really, um, the miracles do happen, you know, and it doesn't happen in every conversation. But I think it's, it happens in those conversations where the intention is for discovery, you know, is to learn. There's a lot of conversation people are having that's going, that is just taking up space just so people don't feel so lonely. But when you have that, that when you have these kind of conversations that you and I are having right now, that opens doors, you know? Yeah, that, that can be like game changers in a person's life without really even knowing what's going on. But just having that curiosity to investigate it is where everything happens. I love what you just said, curiosity to investigate. That's it. Curiosity to investigate. That to me is everything because I have, you have that curiosity. I must have that curiosity to investigate because I, I wouldn't be doing what I'm doing if I didn't, right? (laughs) <laughs> Ain't that the truth, right? But I'm glad that you are because, I mean, I listen to your show when I go for walks and just take time out. And it's it's nice to be able to have these moments that we could give our soul kind of like this little vacation and kind of touch in to see where do we need to explore these parts of us that maybe we're not really, you know, wanting to. Or, yeah, or we, we yeah, wanting to. We may have resistance to it. Um but when we see other people doing it, uh, or, or we can do it, we get the confidence, right? Build up the confidence. I'm going to say that, you know, I for the longest time, I had so much lack of confidence in myself. Uh, you know, I, when I was in, I, in fact, I had so much lack of confidence in myself that I couldn't socialize. I was a fear of socialization in in uh, in, in school in the early early years that I would eat my lunch in a bathroom stall Aww. because I was afraid to eat with other people because I had such a lack of confidence in myself that I couldn't. And, you know, I mean, now, I mean, I'm so removed from that, but I feel sorry for that, that guy that was me that had, that, that, that felt like so scared to interact, you know, isn't that crazy? I was that way. And now I'm here. 
Well, you know, I think it it says a lot about just the human spirit and your soul, of course, within itself, because we look at this journey that we all have to take. And all of us have points where we have insecurities or doubts, or we're not quite at this place where we feel fully confident. And, you know, I think for a lot of people, I go, gosh, you know, Gary went through that. You know, I'm having problems maybe speaking in groups or attending meetings yeah. and being heard. So I, I think yeah. it gives a lot of people hope. Uh, yeah, yeah. I had so many hangups when I grew up, um, so many fears. And um, I grew up in a somewhat, like many people, a dysfunctional family when I think about it. And um, uh, so I wasn't fed with a silver spoon in my mouth, but I, I am so grateful uh, for everything in my life, and I'm grateful for all of my experiences. Because you know, Marianne, I don't think there's a bad experience. I think it's 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 how we label them because they they help us learn. As hard as it may be, they help us, and it's it's the way we use those experiences that, to help us wake up. Yeah, they can either be challenges or opportunities for growth, depending on how we want to perceive things. And believe me, right. I mean, there have been many times where I, all I could see was a challenge. But looking back, I was like, wow, I learned so much going through that. Yeah, I'm still learning, you know, and uh, I feel like uh, I'm still growing. And uh, I can even I could even I can see where I've grown even in a year's length of time from from where, where I am today. I mean, I'm growing so fast right now. It's like accelerated growth. Um it's accelerating. It's 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 crazy, but um, I'm take. It's like I'm in a fast lane. Well, we're all growing. I mean, every time I think, "Hey, hey, I got this," you know, a new plateau shows up and a uh, new lesson yeah. is like, "Oh, you still have more." <laughs> a lot of stuff. What I thought, even you know, a while back, was true. I, I let it go because I, I found something truer. Yeah, and it's just, it's interesting because we reach different levels of understanding and perception. So when we do that, what might be true for us, you know, my 10, you know, my 20 year old self has a different perception than my 51 year old self, you know? Yes. And I would say for anybody listening right now, that um, there's opportunity at every, no matter who or what you are, what, you know, there's always opportunity and to, for growth, paralyzed people, you know, everybody, um, the physical body is not working as well. you you know, compens- you compensate for that, you know, for in, in other ways. And, and, and I think the spiritual thinking, seeing yourself as a whole person spiritually, our bodies, all, of, all our bodies are going to fail at some point. But if we can see ourselves as a whole being spiritually that encompasses all the physical reality and more and 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 know that we can never fully know everything in this life but we continue to push the boundaries no matter what our situation is you know my goodness gary i mean we could talk for hours i just love spending time with you i think you're one of the most amazing people we have on this planet where can our listeners connect with you and learn more about the work you do and also where they can listen to your show? Oh, I, I, I love that. Um, people can hear me on WRPI.org. Uh, the shows are streamed live. They can hear me all over the world uh, on that. We're all, I'm all, it's based in Troy, New York at, at the Rensselaer Polytechnic Institute. It's a student-run station. WRPI, 91.5 FM, and from Troy. So you can hear it on the radio and a certain circumference from the radio station. And and uh, and like I say, it's streamed live. And I say student-run, and I, I so honor all the students that, that are, are – that, they do a great job in keeping this radio station alive. And um, so I've, I really feel very lucky to be amongst all these beautiful young people, too, that that they're, 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 my, they're young people. They're thinking younger. You know, they're, they're not, they're, you know, they're intelligent. And so, I mean, I'm really happy to be part of the station. Okay, WRPI.org. Uh, as far as kind of connecting with me personally, I can give you my email address, which is in the spirit two four two four 
at yahoo dot com. I, I, you know, I, I, I check my emails all the time. I'd be happy to hear from anybody that wants to uh, uh, ask any questions whatsoever about what I do or anything whatsoever. I'm, I'm real, always willing and ha- happy to help anybody. That's in the spirit. Two four two four at yahoo dot com. W R P I dot org. Yeah. Well, Gary, thank you so much for taking the time to be on the show with us here today. Well, you know, Mary, and it's a real pleasure. Um, I'm sitting here in this room surrounded by candles lit and, uh, and I love lights. You know, I, I got, you know, I got, to, I got a couple of aquariums here lit up. So I love the space that I'm in and I, I'm real. this is just the perfect, perfect place to be able to talk with you today. And so thank you for giving me the opportunity to share my uh, my experiences in my life with people. Well, thank you, Gary. It's been such an honor to spend this time with you and to talk about not only your life, but your shows, including In the Spirit. Well, we're at the end of our time today. I would like to thank everyone for tuning in. You're listening to Moments with Marianne. And remember, make every moment count. Oh. In a single moment, your life can change. Moments with Marianne is a transformative hour that covers an endless array of topics with the best of the best. Her guests are leaders in their fields, ranging from inspirational authors, top industry leaders, and business and spiritual entrepreneurs. Each guest is gifted and a true visionary, a recognized leader in her own work. And while teaching others to develop, refocus, and grow, Marianne will bring the best guest and sometimes a special surprise. Don't miss this. You never know just which moment will change your life forever. Moments with Mary Ann airs every Sunday, Monday, Thursday, and Friday at 8 p.m. Eastern and 5 p.m. Pacific Time. Make sure to tune in and visit momentswithmaryann.com for more information.